All right, how's everybody doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella Comanche, and we're going to take a look at examples one through four as we begin chapter nine. Sequences in the series, and we're going to start off with sequences. Now, a sequence is going to be defined as a function whose domain is a set of positive numbers. So that means your first term of the sequence is going to be a sub 1, your second term is going to be a sub 2, your third term is going to be a sub 3, and so on, until you get to, of course, a sub n. Now after a sub n, of course, you'd have a sub n plus 1, and then a sub n plus 2, and so on and so forth. Now the nth term of the sequence is defined to be just a sub n. And then the entire sequence is denoted by these curly brackets right here, or these braces, and that's just some notation pieces that we're going to have to be aware of. Now here, writing the first five terms of the sequence, this is pretty straightforward stuff. So a sub n, so that means our term is going to be 2 to some power. So if we want our first term, that means anywhere there's an n, we're going to put in a 1. So 2 to the first power, which is just 2 a sub 2 of course is going to be 2 to the second power which is going to be 4 a to the sub 3 is going to be 2 to the third power which is just 8 a to the fourth or a sub 4 is going to be 2 to the fourth power so our fourth term in the sequence is going to be 16 and then our final term in our sequence here is 2 to the fifth which is just 32 so that's how you find the first five terms of each sequence. Now here, for example, b, our term is defined by this formula, 3 to the n over n factorial. So our first term is going to be 3 to the first over 1 factorial. Now 3 to the first, of course, is just 3, and then 1 factorial is just 1. Now for the factorial, that's one of the pieces that you should kind of go back and take a look at because there's a whole bunch of these that you should have memorized. Like one factorial, of course, is just one. Two factorial is going to be two times one, or just two. Three factorial is going to be three times two times one, which, of course, is just six. Four factorial, okay, you get the idea here, is going to be four times six, which ends up giving you 24. 5 factorial is 5 times 24, which gives you 120. And 6 factorial is going to be 6 times 120, or 720. All right, so as we move on and find our second term, now we're going to have 3 to the second power over 2 factorial. And 2 factorial, we know that's just 2, and 3 squared is 9, so you can just leave it as 9 halves. Our third term in our sequence is going to be 3 to the third power over 3 factorial. And we know from before that 3 factorial is 6. And of course, 3 cubed is 27. Now, a note here about 27 over 6. You are not going to reduce this because this term, this represents a term in a sequence. And so you don't reduce that because the actual term itself is 27 over 6. Okay, so just don't reduce. All right, then our fourth term and our fifth term. So you guys go get the idea. So go ahead and finish up those two terms and just double check your work to make sure that you're good as well. All right, so hopefully you did okay with that. You got 81 over 24 for the fourth term and 243 over 120 for term number five. All right, let's move on here to example number two. Now, this time, we've got to write the first five terms of the recursively defined sequence. Now, recursive sequence is when you're going to have a number right here, in this case, um, a sub 1. So they're going to have to always give you a term. And in this case, this is a term that you're going to be given right here. So you always have to be given a term. And then you're going to be given this recursive formula. And that just means the term that you want to find, this k plus 1, that means the next term, is going to be defined by the answer you get, or the previous term, when you plug a number into this formula. So what this is going to look like, meaning a sub 1, that's our first term, is 3. So that means a sub 2 is going to be 2 times, now 3 is going to go in for a sub k. So 3 goes in there, and then minus 1, so you can do the arithmetic there. 3 minus 1 is 2 times 2, you end up with 4. 
So what we're going to do then for a sub 3, for our third term, we're going to have 2 times, now we're going to take the answer that we just got 4, because that was our second term, and we're going to substitute that in now for a sub k. So 4 minus 1, we know that's 3, 3 times 2 is 6. Now we're going to take 6 and use that to help us figure out our fourth term. So we're going to have 2 times 6 minus 1, which is 5. So 2 times 5, that's just 10. And then lastly, we're going to figure out our fifth term. So 2 times 10 minus 1, which is 9. So 2 times 9 is 18. So the first five terms of our sequence are 3, 4, 6, 10, and 18. All right, so those are going to be the terms here, the first five terms in this recursively defined sequence. All right, so now for example three, we've got to match the sequence with its graph. So for this particular type of problem, you can do it by hand, where you can say, okay, a sub n is going to be this formula here for choice a. So I could put in one to figure out my first term. So a sub 1, I would do 1 plus 1 equals 2, so e divided by 2 is 4. So my first term would be 4. And then I could put in 2, and that means my second term is going to end up being 8 over 3, because 2 plus 1 is 3, and then e divided by 3 would just be 8 thirds. And then a sub 3, so my third term is going to be 3 plus 1 is 4, 8 divided by 4, that's just going to be 2. So I can see that my terms are decreasing in size. So that means a is out because a is increasing. Uh, if I look over at graph b, b is also out. So now I'm kind of looking between c and d and they both look really similar. So what I want you to do actually is we're going to take out our um, graphing calculator but before we do that what I want to do first is analyze the scale of each of the graphs. Now on this first one my y's go 5, 6, 7, 8 so this goes all the way up to about 8. And then to the on the x-axis, let's say it's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so that goes all the way to 10. So it looks like all of these have 10 terms graphed. So our x-axis is going to go, we're going to start with our first term and we're going to go to our 10th term. So those, those are for the x's. All right. And then for the y's, if I take a look at the y's, then each one is, let's see, that's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. B right here, that goes as high as 11. So we're going to start, and now notice on example or choice C, it looks like it, it's right kind of on the line right there, right on the x axis. So I'm actually going to go a little bit below that. I'm going to go from negative 1 to say, uh, to say 12, because we'll just go a little bit above it, because that's going to be important when we set up our viewing window. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go ahead and set up our graphing calculator. Now to do that, here's the first thing I want you to do. I want you to hit the mode button and when you do that you'll be presented with this with this screen right here. So go ahead, let's see, let me just make this a little bit smaller here so we can see that. There we go. So get your mode set up like this. Now there's two things that are important. One is that you have this sequence, you're in sequence mode. So arrow down and then arrow all the way across to make sure that you select sequence mode. Below that, make sure you change connected to dot. So make sure that you get your uh, graphing calculator set in sequence mode. After that's done, we're going to adjust our window. Now, our window is going to look a little bit different. Now, nmin and nmax, that tells you how many terms you're going to have. So we're going to start with one term and go to 10, because uh, that's all we're going to need to really worry about. Now the plot starts, so that's going to start plotting our first term. And a plot step means to go from one term to the next, you're going up by one. The next thing that I want to do for the x min, so that's where I had to pay attention to scale the x min and x max. Both of those, what I want to do is I'm going to kind of change that a little bit. I'm just going to go from zero, and then I'm going to go on the max, we're going to go to just 11. So that's going to be the x min and x max. And I'm going to arrow down and change my y min to negative 1. Now make sure you hit the negative key, uh, negative 1. And then our y min is going to be, let's see, we're going to go 1 above the number of terms we have. So we're going to go to 12. And then the y scale is just by 1. Now when we, um, once we get our window set up, what we're going to do next is hit the y equals button. 
when you hit the Y equals button. Now this is going to look very, very, very different. So N min, so that's going to be your first term. So we're going to set that at 1. And then this piece here, U sub N, that's going to be where you type in your formula that you're given. In this case, it's 8 over N plus 1. Now in case you forget how to get it to be a fraction like that, you just hit alpha and then you hit your y equals and you'll see this menu will pop up here and slash g that very first one that allows you to set it up as numerator denominator so you'll use that to do that now if, if you don't use that or you don't have that option because your um, calculators operating system hasn't been updated then what you're going to do instead um, when you go to type this in just take your time because notice there are two terms on the bottom so you'd have to do eight and then you're divided by key and then don't forget parentheses now the n you get that just from hitting the the variable button which usually most people just use the x it's right next to the alpha button so then it would be n what is it plus one so make sure you close that off and then when you graph that because we already set our graphing window up you'll see the ten terms graphed there so that one, if you take a look at that, that of course, let's see, let's kind of close that up a little bit. That is going to match up closest with D. All right, so here, so this one is going to be choice D. And then we would do the same thing again, but, you know, if you're not going to use the uh, fraction piece, just make sure you put parentheses around the numerator and parentheses around the denominator when you type that into your graphing calculator. So let me go ahead and give you a moment to type each one of those in, and then come on back and check your answers for these four problems. So hopefully you did all right with that. You got D, A, C, B. Now where some people are going to have maybe a little bit of an issue, uh, they might forget where the... Uh, where the factorial symbol is right here for example number or letter D so to get to the factorial symbol on your graphing calculator um, let me make this a little bit bigger put it on the screen there so you can see that so to get to the factorial symbol what you're gonna do first is hit the math button and then you're gonna arrow over and I just arrow to the left and then go down in the PRB menu because that's probability and you're going to go down to number four that's where your factorial is is located so if you didn't know where that was located now you do and you know how to get there to work with these types of problems alright so that's it for example number three using our graphing calculator thank you technology alright so here in example four we've got to simplify this factorial expression here 2n minus 1 factorial over 2n plus 1 factorial and before we even start that what I want to kind of take a look at is just going back and reviewing a little bit if you had uh, say 5 factorial you can rewrite that a whole bunch of different ways one is 5 times 4 factorial or you could say 5 times 4 times and then 3 factorial or you could simply go 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial. You get the idea for that. So that's going to come into play here in a little bit for this. Now, both of these have a 2n component of it. So that's going to be kind of our, our starting place, 2n right there. Now, if I go 1 above whatever 2n is, whatever that term would be, would be 2n plus 1. Now, if I go to the term before 2n, well, that's going to be 2n minus 1. So this is going to kind of play into effect here. Now, if we were to line those up and put them in order from smallest to greatest, they would be in this order, 2n minus 1, then 2n, then 2n plus 1. And remember, these just represent the terms. So when I analyze my fraction over here, 2n minus 1 factorial over 2n plus 1 factorial, the smaller of the two is going to be the one that I'm going to leave alone, and you'll see why here in a second. So 2n minus 1, that is going to just, we're going to leave that as 2n minus 1 factorial. Now in the denominator, 2n plus 1 factorial, so if I write that out, 2n plus 1, so I'm going to decrease that by the next term, so then it's going to go down to 2n, and then if I decrease that again, then it's going to go to 2n minus 1. Now mo notice both of the numerator and denominator have a 2n minus 1 in it. So I'm not going to go on to the 2n minus 2 term. I'm just going to stop right there and put a factorial with it. Because then what happens is then the 2n minus 1 factorial pieces, both of those cancel out. So my final answer then after I'm done simplifying is just going to be 1 over 
2n times 2n plus 1. Now you could switch the 2n and the 2n plus 1 terms around. That's okay, but it doesn't really matter. But you don't have to distribute it to come up with 1 over 4n squared plus 2n. So don't bother doing that. All right, so that's it for example number 4. Now for example number five, we've got to come up with expressions for the nth term of a sequence. And with this kind of stuff, some people are really good and they can kind of see it right away. And other people, they just struggle with it and they don't see it right off the bat. So it takes some playing around until you finally get a formula that'll work, not just for the first two terms, but for all of them. All right. So those are just some things to really, you know, be patient with yourself as, as you learn to get the hang of, of these here. Now the first one, when we take a look at this, it's kind of easy to see in the, in the numerator. It's kind of nice because you start out, so n is always going to start with your first term, which is 1, which is, starts right here in this first expression, this first fraction. But then I go over to the second one, and hey, look, my second term starts out with a 2. And my third term has a 3 in the numerator. And my fourth term has a 4 in the numerator. So that means that's kind of nice. So that my formula is going to be just a sub n is going to be my numerator. Now to get the two numbers in the denominator, to get to two and to get to three if from your term that's in the numerator, what you're going to do to get to the first term, notice between one and two, you just go up by one. So that's going to be n plus one. And then to come up with the third three, you're just going to add two to that, n plus two. Oh, this right here should be, had a little writer right there, that should just be n. All right, so that's going to be the expression that you're going to have for the nth term of that first sequence. Now one of the things you always want to do once you come up with whatever the formula is, is you do want to double check it. So if I plug in 2, because uh, I want to find, say, my second term, yeah, I'm going to have 2 on the top. 2 plus 1 gives me 3, and then 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Is that a match? Yeah. So let's go ahead and try the third term. I would definitely have 3 on top, and then 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5. And then the fourth term, of course, I'd have 4 on top, and 4 plus 1 is 5, and then 4 plus 2 is 6. So all of my terms are matching up with what's uh, what I'm given, so that one's going to go ahead and work out just lovely. So one of the things you want to take a look at for B is you want to definitely notice or that the sequence alternates. And so that's going to be something that comes into play quite a bit in this chapter. And the other thing, when you see that, in order to account for that, you're going to have negative 1 to some power. Now here's where you have to kind of pay attention to a little bit of, of uh, investigative work, so to speak. So this is my first term right here. Here's my second term, here's my third term, and then this is the fourth term. Now notice my odd terms are the ones that are positive, and the even terms are the ones that are negative. So in order to make that first term positive, I'm going to have to add 1 for my exponent here of negative 1. Because if I plug in 1 for n, 1 plus 1 of course is 2, and when you square negative 1 you get a positive. If I were to plug in 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, so my second term would be negative. And you can verify that with the third and the fourth term as well. So that's one of the pieces that you're going to want to uh, take note of there. Now this next one, this is kind of interesting. So you have nothing in the denominator, which is kind of like over 1, and you have 1 times 3, then 1 times 3 times 5, 1 times 3 times 5 times 7. So you're kind of in this pattern where you're only multiplying the odd numbers in the denominator. So you start out with 1, and then you go up to 3, and then you go up to 5, you go up to 7, and so on and so forth. Now because you're only multiplying the odds, you can't just say 2n, because that would be like only the even numbers. So you have to add or subtract one. In this case, we'll go ahead and subtract one. So that's going to kind of help me a little bit as you play around with this and come up with a formula for this particular example. Now there's several different formulas. Go ahead and play around, see what you can come up with, and then see if it actually matches the one that, that I, I'm going to write down, or if you came up with one on your own. Alright, so here's one version of a formula that will work for this particular sequence. There are a couple other ones out there, and if you found one of those, good for you. Alright, that's it for the first five examples. Now for the other examples in this section, there'll be a separate video for those. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you guys soon. Peace out.